Hello and welcome my friends. Today I have a very special video for you all. We are going to be creating the Continental Army of the United States in RimWorld. Not only creating them, but we are also going to be surviving, nay, thriving with them. But real quick, before the video begins, I make videos like this all the time. So if you like it, be sure to like, subscribe, stick around, you're gonna love it. And you're gonna love your daddy rap before it's all over with. But now, with all that being said, let us dive right in. First things first, we're starting out with our main man named Henry. Henry here is going to be the leader of our Continental Army. He's what you might call a true red-blooded American. But of course he can't do it on his own, so we are going to give him his army. These brave men have volunteered to die in our, <clears throat> I mean, fight for their freedom with us. So we are now an army of 45 men strong. It doesn't seem like much, but of course in RimWorld, 45 is a pretty good size raid. Now with that being said, I do love our beautiful and handsomely dressed soldiers. However, we are going to be capturing enemies and recruiting them as militia members, growing our forces to exponential levels to try and defeat the other powers of the planet while also trying not to starve to death. Speaking of the other powers upon the planet, there are quite a few of them, of course. Some of the most notable, of course, are the Prussians, the British, and the French, and there are also quite a few tribes as well. And a quick disclaimer as well, because I'm not going to be doing things historically accurate, I'm just here to have some fun. So if you want to see something like that, too bad. Anyhow though, I basically just copied Commander Henry here and duplicated him many times for our soldiers so their stats are all exactly the same. And now before any of you say, oh, they're incapable of intellectual because they're Americans, I didn't do that on purpose and you're really starting to hurt my feelings. Anyhow though, you'll also notice that their uniforms are actually Prussian, not American or anything like that and that's because I couldn't find anything on the workshop to use here. But I don't know, I thought the uniforms looked similar enough, I guess. First things first though, we're going to need to claim this land for ourselves, and the only real way to go about doing that is by planting our glorious flag. Ah, uh, smells like freedom, baby. You may feel the need to point out that my flag design only has eight stars on it. <laughs> Oh, I would hate you so much. Obviously, I'm joking. I love you all ever so much. Almost as much as I love building some wonderful cabins and fortresses. But you know what we need for that? Wood. Well, I suppose it's a great thing that our soldiers are already working diligently on getting plenty of that for us. They're also working on gathering up all the berries on the map so we don't starve to death in the first two days. Now, we're also using the Dub's Bad Hygiene mod, meaning that we're going to need a place to poo. So we began working on a small latrine. But of course there won't be any poo if we don't eat any meals, so we began building campfires to cook our berries on. Mm, mm, mm. Roasted berries, just like Ma used to make back home. With our first day coming to a close, might I just say that it has been mighty successful as well. We have plenty of berries to munch on for the next few days, and just as well we have plenty of wood to begin our fortress. But now my friends, it's time for us to rest our weary heads underneath the beautiful American stars. Alright, that's that's enough of that, let's get our asses back to work. The very next day, we began bright and early working on our beautiful fortress walls to make sure that we're basically safe inside. And that the filthy British and French and Prussians can't just wander right in anytime they want. With day two though, we would also begin trying to prepare for our hunger. Berries weren't going to last us for very long, and other crops are going to take quite a while to grow, so the only other option is wildlife. Another pressing concern for us, of course, was the hygiene of our soldiers though, so we began building a well just on the outside of our camp so we could wash our smelly Arses. With that completed, we would then add on to our latrine and build a bit of a bathhouse so the men could get all soapy and wet together. <laughs> Knock it off, you bunch of freaks. I'm just talking about bathing. As day two came to a close, we would get a good gander at all the animals that we had killed and all the meat that we would be able to eat in the next few days. Sometime later, we would then begin construction on massive barracks for all of our soldiers to sleep safe and sound inside, away from any dastardly foreign powers. But you know what I hate? more than foreign powers trying to strip away my god-given rights. Well, nothing quite frankly, but a close second for me is having my data stolen by those same foreign powers or even domestic powers. And that is why today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN, is my number one choice for protecting myself and my data. And that's why they should be yours as well. Look, it's no secret that nowadays everything you do online is constantly being tracked, but it doesn't have to be that way. With Surfshark VPN, you control your own data and 
you control your own privacy, as it should be. Not to mention the fact that you can actually access shows and movies that are banned in your own country. I mean, my goodness, that's amazing. We are truly living in the future with Surfshark VPN. All you have to do is enter promo code RATNIGHT for 83% off and three months free. Not only will you be helping support the channel of your favorite rodent, but you're also getting yourself one heck of a deal. Thank you once again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a revolution to attend. <laughs> Now by this point, as you could imagine, our men got tired of digging the sewage out of our latrines, so we began building some wooden piping down to the river. We would also begin heavily focusing on beautifying our barracks. Now I know that may seem a little bit silly, but we're building some wood flooring with a beauty of one, and the reasoning behind that is because the men continued having mental breaks because of their disgusting barracks and having to eat raw food and stuff like that. As one might imagine, these were not exactly the happiest conditions to be living in, but we were trying our damnedest to make it at least slightly better. Better. And then, out of nowhere, those filthy, tea-drinking British showed their ugly mugs. I'm joking, I'm sure you're all extremely beautiful. Anyhow, though, they were planning an attack on us, so obviously, though, we would attack them preemptively as we outnumbered them tenfold. We marched our troops across the river, just like George Washington that one time. We crept up upon the British and got close enough that we could see the whites of their eyes. And that's how we knew it was time to fire. We all stood shoulder to shoulder. The only thing between us was the smoke from our muskets. Oh, how I wish I could tell you the British put up a good fight. But if I told you that, I would be lying to you because we put the absolute smackdown upon them. I mean, we outnumbered them by a shit ton, so it was kind of inevitable. I checked the skills on one of the British soldiers and she wasn't totally useless, so we decided that we would kidnap her, lock her in this room, and recruit her to be the first member of our militia. But that'll take quite a while to do, and in the meantime, we have plenty of wounded to tend to. Now, this day and age of scratch is basically a death sentence, so we need to make sure no one gets infections. We would also begin focusing on our crops, which is something truthfully we should have done already, but the raid caused a little bit of a disturbance, so we were a little behind on. Something else that we were also very behind on was recreation. These poor strapping lads were bored out of their noggins and they had nothing to do, so we decided to build them all some chess tables to keep their minds sharp. Once all that was completed, we also began working on plenty of shelves for our warehouse. As we had so much wood and nothing to really use it on, we decided to use it for more places to store wood, naturally. And finally, last but not least, we were able to begin working on some tables and chairs for all of our soldiers to eat at, and that would help us out with that silly little debuff of eating without a table. Because by God, if your colony does not have enough tables and chairs for everyone to eat at, it's basically gone. I should suppose, though, that we should just be thankful that we have as much food as we do, that we're actually able to sustain ourselves. I'm quite surprised that we have enough wildlife in the area to hunt. Speaking of which, look at this little fella. Oh, hi, little buddy. Look how cute. Ooh, let's tame him. Oh, not a high enough skill. You don't want to be our friend, huh? That's okay. I... I don't mind. You little bastard, you think you're too good for me? Get back here, you slippery little freak. Yes, run, you disgusting little amphibian. I will catch you. Ah, uh, taking a little snooze, are we? Yes. Rest your eyes, my little friend. Hey oh god. Oh god, what have I what have I done? Oh god, I'm nervous. What have I done? Hey, wait a minute, was I doing Oh yeah, the video. My bad. Yeah, so anyways, we had plenty of delicious little critters to eat and stuff our little patriotic tummies full of them, and that would keep us for a good little while until the rice was grown. Now with that being said, we're going to need a proper place to actually store all of our food, and that way we can also have a proper place to cook it and butcher and blah 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 blah. You get the point. So as you can see with your eyeballs, we built one. Was it perfect? No, not really but it was pretty damn good considering. And at the very least with this structure we'd be able to keep all of our meat and rice out of the rain and prevent mold from growing on it. We would also end up building some camp cauldrons in front of the doorways for easy access. I'm not really sure on the difference between those and campfires except these look a lot better. And with that finished we could finally enjoy some amazing bullfrog legs and berry stew or whatever in God's name we've concocted and do it in good company as well. Nothing like a good meal with your good friends. <laughs> I hope we don't all get dysentery. <laughs> 
but with all that being said, my friends, we have truly created a beautiful fortress out here in the wilderness, in the pines, if you will. This fortress should help protect us from any colonial powers, any tribes, people, or anything like that, and hopefully we'll stand the test of time with liberty and justice for all, or something like that. But this shall conclude the very first episode of our Continental Army. If you would like to see a part two, be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below for the algorithm and all that stuff, and I really appreciate you, and I love you. A special thanks to our patrons for making this video as well as all other videos possible. I truly could not do this without you guys, so it means a lot to me. If you or someone you love would like to support the Rat Knight on Patreon, there's a link in the video description as well as the channel bio, and I would really appreciate it, but it's not a requirement for my love. I'll just love you a little bit more. But thank you all for watching. I love you ever so much. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.